This is breaking news from CBS News Chicago. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim Williams. We're breaking into programming to bring you a live news conference from Chicago Police Headquarters on charges regarding the fatal shooting of Chicago Police Officer Enrique Martinez. Let's go to that news conference now. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And I'm joined here today by Mayor Brandon Johnson, Deputy Mayor of Community Safety, Gary and Gatewood, Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox, ATF Chicago Field Division Special Agent in Charge, Chris Amon, and Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Aaron Wheeler, members of our Chicago Police Command Staff, and members of our investigative response team. On Monday night, our department and our city lost a hero when Officer Enrique Martinez was shot and killed protecting the city of Chicago. Today is the first step in bringing his killer to justice. 23-year-old Darian McMillan has been charged with one felony count of first-degree murder of a police officer one felony count of first degree murder, one felony count of attempt murder of a police officer, one felony count of residential burglary, one felony count of unlawful use of a weapon, machine gun, one felony aggravated unlawful use of a weapon by felony, by felon, I'm sorry. Immediately following the shooting, our detectives from the investigative response team began their investigation to secure charges against the offender who took the life of Officer Martinez. This offender is a convicted felon who was on electronic monitoring out of Will County. Needless to say, this individual should not have been on our streets with a fully automatic weapon a weapon used to kill Officer Martinez, as well as another individual who was in the car with the offender. The responding officers who apprehended this offender amidst a chaotic scene did a great job in their response. Our detectives who gathered all evidence necessary to secure these charges, our partners at the ATF Chicago Field Division who worked to process the gun evidence, and our prosecutorial partners at the state's attorney's office who we communicated with throughout this investigation. I'd like to thank all of them for the great work that they provided to bring these charges. Everyone had a role to play in making sure this offender would be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. They did this in honor of Officer Martinez's sacrifice, and they did this to make sure no one else in our community would face the same heartbreak that Officer Martinez's family is right now. Officer Martinez was killed by the violence he worked to stop. I want that to resonate with everyone. Knowing the risks out in these streets, Officer Martinez and all of our police officers run toward this danger to protect everyone in the city. We all need to be outraged at the violent offenders who are creating endless cycles of trauma in our communities. We need to be outraged at the proliferation of guns that are killing our residents, our children, and our first responders. Anger doesn't describe the feeling that I feel right now. When we think about the loss of this officer who was out trying to protect the city, I think of all of the losses that we've had over this time. Over this past few years, we've suffered the deaths through these violent experiences of Officer Luis Huesca, Officer Ariana Preston, Officer Vasquez Lasso, and Officer Ella French. 
They all fell to the violence in this city while trying to protect this city. And we should be outraged. As I said before, in a society where our officers are brazenly attacked, we have to make sure that we're securing locations where people move about communities without that type of fear. Our officers are important because they're an important part of keeping this city safe daily. Anger is just not enough. We have to channel that anger into energy that's going to keep our city safe by focusing on the violent crimes and the violent acts that are being committed throughout our city, to focus on those repeat offenders who continue to offend and continue to terrorize our city and our communities. In his final moments, he protected our city. Above all else, it's our duty and our mission to carry on the work that Officer Martinez was providing the night that he lost his life. I want to thank everyone here in the city and across this country for the outpouring of condolences for the officer and his family. It was far reaching. It meant a lot to the family. It continues to mean a lot to the family. And we have to make sure that we are standing with the family who lost an officer attempting to protect this city. The focus now is on the family. We have to make sure, one, that we're respecting the privacy of the family, especially while they grieve uh, through these times. We have to make sure that the family understands the work that the officer was doing out there so that the family understands that their family member's life was not taken in vain. So the Chicago Police Department, we're going to continue to work through this. We're going to continue to work with the family and work with our communities. Stand up. Had a meeting with our officers yesterday. They all wanted to be at work. And they wanted to be at work, not just for Officer Martinez, but they knew that he was out there protecting the communities and the people of these communities, and they wanted to be out there to continue that. They understand how much they're needed here. They understand how much these communities need them, and they're going to be there to make sure that we keep those most vulnerable people safe, that we keep our children safe from these types of violent attacks by those people who should not be walking our streets right now. So please, again, keep the family in your thoughts and prayers because they're struggling right now at the loss of a 26-year-old individual who chose a life of service and had just a little under three years on the job. He was energetic, he was focused, and he wanted to make sure that he went out and did a good day's work to keep this city safe. With that, I'm going to turn it over to the Chief of Detectives, Antoinette City. Good afternoon. I want to reiterate, Superintendent, in expressing our deepest condolences to Officer Martinez's family and loved ones. The investigation revealed that Officer Martinez and his partner were conducting a traffic stop on a vehicle blocking traffic in the 8,000 block of South Ingleside at approximately 8 p.m. The vehicle was occupied by three individuals, including the offender now charged. Additional officers responded to assist with the stop. After approaching the vehicle, Officer Martinez and his partner were speaking with the driver of the vehicle. After noticing McMillan, in the front passenger seat reaching for a bag on the floor of the vehicle, Officer Martinez and his partner gave verbal direction for McMillan to stop reaching. At this point, McMillan produced a fully automatic handgun equipped with a machine gun conversion device and an extended magazine and fired in the direction of Officer Martinez, fatally striking him. 
The driver of the vehicle was also fatally struck multiple times by McMillan's gunfire. The weapon was recovered inside the vehicle. McMillan pushed the driver out of the vehicle and jumped into the driver's seat. As another officer attempted to pull McMillan out of the driver's seat, McMillan put the vehicle in reverse, dragging the officer. While being dragged, the officer's firearm discharged one time into the ground. The vehicle crashed into a parked car, coming to a stop a short distance later. McMillan fled the vehicle and entered a first floor apartment with a woman inside. McMillan found a knife he used to cut off his electronic monitoring bracelet and then fled the scene. The woman was not harmed. Officers eventually located McMillan in the 8,000 block of South Maryland, where he was taken into custody and positively identified. Detectives continued the investigation, securing charges today. While this does not erase the grief of Officer Martinez's family, we hope it brings a small measure of comfort knowing the person responsible for his murder will face justice. I want to thank the responding officers and detectives from the investigative response team who made sure this offender was taken into custody and would not be able to hurt anyone else. We are also immensely grateful for our partners at the ATF Chicago Field Division who responded to the scene that night and assisted in this investigation. Throughout this investigation, we worked closely with the Cook County State's Attorney Office to secure these charges, and I want to thank them for helping us bring charges in this case. I'd now like to turn it over to Mayor Brandon Johnson. I am not Mayor Brandon Johnson. Um, thank you, Chief. Thank you, Superintendent Snelling, to Mayor Johnson, to the law enforcement partners that joined with us here today. Today, once again, our community is mourning, and our Chicago Police Department is also mourning. Today, once again, we gather in the wake of a devastating travesty. Let me say, I was just here less than a week ago, standing at this very podium alongside these same officers and detectives and the superintendent, talking about other officers who had been fired upon and thankfully were able to survive their shift that evening with their lives. A mere six days later, we stand once again, shoulder to shoulder, talking about the horrific violence that continues to plague not just our city, but the men and women who wear a uniform and run to the danger. To the family of Officer Martinez, a young man who chose a profession that was wrought with danger. A young man who I imagine in telling his family that he has chosen a life in law enforcement in a city like Chicago with the issues of guns and violence, that they, woke, they stayed awake at night worrying about him to ultimately get the call that he would not make it home in service to the people of the city of Chicago is any family's worst nightmare. I want to once again send my condolences to his family as they grieve during this time, to the officer who bore witness to his partner lose his life and almost lose his own, and the devastating trauma that he will have to endure for years to come. To those who have been impacted and affected and show up today anyway, on behalf of the Cook County State's Attorney's Office and the people of Cook County, we thank you. We thank you for your service. As the superintendent said, we have filed multiple charges in this case, including first degree murder of a police officer, the first degree murder, attempted first degree murder of a police officer, residential burglary, and possession of a machine gun. This defendant will appear in first appearance court tomorrow at the Layton County Courthouse, which starts at 11.30 a.m. During that court proceeding, a full recitation of facts, also known as a proffer, will be made available to all of you at that time. 
As I started these remarks, I would like to end them the same. We must never forget the profound sacrifices made by our police officers who put their lives on the line every single day to protect our communities. We owe them an immeasurable debt of gratitude, quite honestly, one which we will never be able to pay. And it is our solemn duty to pursue justice for those who have fallen in service. The Cook County State's Attorney's Office thanks the Chicago Police Department, the IRT, the ATF, for their partnership over the course of the last 48 hours to allow us to be in the position that we are in today, to have these charges approved, to begin the step of accountability. And we, at the State's Attorney's Office, will not rest until this defendant is held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. With that, I will turn it over to Mayor Brandon Johnson. Thank you, Madam State's Attorney, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to our Superintendent, Superintendent Snelling, as well as to our Chief of Detectives, Chief Versetti, and to the entire police department. The city of Chicago continues to grieve and mourn for the loss, the tragic loss of our dear officer, our dear officer Enrique Martinez. Our thoughts and our prayers will remain, not just for today, but throughout for his family, for his colleagues that served alongside of him and for the entire police department. The work that is done every single day to make our city a safer place um, is done by incredibly gr gr uh, brave and courageous individuals. I do want to especially acknowledge the responding officers who were on the scene that day. Those officers witnessed the unspeakable tragedy and the loss of their own officer Enrique Martinez and amid very real danger. They acted quickly to take action, responding to a violent offender. Officer Enrique Martinez saved lives, even though he knew it, it could cost him his own. This exemplifies what our police officers do every single day. They know the sacrifices as well as the risks of their profession, but yet still they work every day to protect us. Our entire city recognizes the extraordinary courage of the women and men of the Chicago Police Force. They have our deepest respect and our unending gratitude for protecting our city. Of course, especially in the wake of heartbreaking loss, the fact that they continue to show up every single day is a testament to their love for this city. And while today's charges won't bring back Officer Enrique Martinez, it's our hope that these charges will bring a sense of justice. Justice for the family and all that knew and loved Officer Enrique Martinez. We do grieve the loss of a brave public servant, a good-hearted young man, and a Chicagoan. As a city, let's continue, please, to pray for the family of Officer Enrique Martinez. We pray that they find peace along their healing journey. And we pray that the memory of Officer Martinez will be a comforting blessing. We also pray for the police officers who mourn this loss, and we pray for their safety and protection. I know the city of Chicago is reeling from this senseless act of violence. I'm here to tell you that we really have had enough of these acts of violence, particularly committed with guns. So we're gonna to continue to do everything in our power to end violence, and we need to do that together. The road ahead is certainly not a short one. It is a long journey. But I want us to remember that each and every one of us, we have the power to make a difference. Each and every one of us has the power to make our community safer. We have to support one another, look out for one another, and stand up for our communities together. 
I've been heartened to see an outpouring of support for the Chicago Police Department this week and beyond. And it gives me hope that the people of this city share our vision for a better, stronger, safer city. And once again, I do want to commend and thank the Chicago Police Department. These charges say certainly are a testament to why our detective division has to continue to be supported. We will bring justice for the Martinez family, the Chicago Police Department, and the city of Chicago as a whole. Let us continue to hold up Officer Enrique Martinez and his family. Hold him and his family in our hearts. And let us remember that Officer Martinez served with gratitude and courage and love. We thank him for his service. May we continue to honor his memory by committing to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago together. With that, I will turn it back over to our police superintendent for questions. Mayor Brandon Johnson there along with police officials you, announcing Mayor. charges in the murder of Chicago police officer Enrique Martinez on Monday night. The man charged is 23-year-old Darian McMillan who was on an electronic monitoring at the time of the shooting. Superintendent Larry Snelling said he should not have been on the street. We will continue the news conference on the stream, cbschicago.com, and we'll have much more on television at 4 o'clock. Until then, have a good afternoon. This has been breaking news from CBS News Chicago.